Namaste and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, students, uh, today we are going to begin Unit 13. And in Unit 13, uh, we will have a reading comprehension in the beginning. And so today's topic uh, is The Chimney Sweeper. It's a poem composed by William Blake, a pre-romantic poet from England. OK. Uh, before we begin the poem, uh, we have uh, one picture there in the book on page number 145. There you can see the picture on the screen. Please look at the picture, the same picture that is given in your book. Uh, you can see it right now on the screen. So what do you see in the picture? What do you see? There are some boys, don't you think so? There are some boys. Uh, and what do, what do they look like? Are they happy? Do they look like, uh, do they look happy or sad or what? I guess you can understand by the expression of those boys, they look in fact unhappy. They look, they have got, you know, dismal faces, sad faces. And their wearings, their outfit. The one who is sitting in the middle, you know, he has got, uh, sorts, torn sorts, very old, ragged type of sorts, and their hair also not well arranged, not well combed, and then, okay, their expression after all, you know, looks, uh, they look very sad, unhappy. And by looking at this picture, uh, you know, you can guess their age also. They just look like uh, the school boys, but in fact, their outfit, their clothes, or their dresses um, tell us that you know they are not school goers or they are not school going children. Uh, they look like you know workers or slaves or servants, something like that. And then uh, you can guess um, their condition, their plight, and then you can also imagine if you were in plus in place of those boys, those children, what would you do? Don't you think uh, the children look like, you know, some workers, child workers? Don't you think, don't you think this is the time for them to go to school and uh, to study? Or this is the time for them, you know, to enjoy their child rights? They look like, you know, orphans. The children without parents, without parental love and care. So. By looking at this picture, the, this particular old picture, um, you know, you can guess what the poem will be about. So here, our poem for today is The Chimney Sweeper, composed by William Blake. And uh, uh, before we actually do the reading, or before I explain the lines or the stanzas given there. Uh, altogether, there are six stanzas. And then, before I tell you the meaning or the analysis of the poem, uh, let me uh, draw your attention to its reading. I have got one recording. And there, at the same time, while you listen to um, the poem, uh, you will also watch a kind of uh, animated type of um, film, a short animation about the poem. And uh, while listening to the poem, while listening to the reading of the poem, you just um, try to understand um, what the poem is about by uh, looking at those uh, pictures or say animation or that video. So please, watch the video on your screen. When my mother died, I was very young, and my father sold me, while yet my tongue could scarcely cry, Weep! 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 So your chimneys I sweep, and in soot I sleep. There's little Tom Dacre, who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved. So I said, Hush, Tom, 
Never mind it, for when your head's bare, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. And so he was quiet. And that very night, as Tom was a-sleeping, he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel, who had a bright key, and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, laughing they run, and wash in a river, and shine in the sun. Then naked and white, all their bags left behind, they rise upon clouds, and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he'd be a good boy, he'd have God for his father, and never want joy. And so Tom awoke, and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So, if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. Okay, <coughs> you just listened to the poem. That was the recording in a foreign voice. You heard it, and then you also watched that movie, a, a sort of animation clip. And uh, by looking at that also, by watching that also, I think uh, you got something about the poem. So here now, this is the time for our actual reading. And uh, as uh, I prepared, I just wanted to deal with the poem um, by showing you the slide on the screen. But in fact, um, this is not working properly right now. So uh, I'm sorry for that. And now this time, I would like to explain the poem stanza wise. Beginning from the first stanza, um, there are six quatrains. In poem, you know, quatrains, uh, the verse with four lines each, that is a quat quatrain. And then we have got six quatrains like that. So uh, this poem, I think, is going to be a very beautiful poem for you. Uh, you will enjoy, I guess, because the poem um, has got some rhyming words. Beautiful rhyming words are there. You can just find out rhyming words means just having uh, the words with same sound, similar sound at the end of the poem, a poetic line. And then, <clears throat> in the chim chimney sweeper, you know, the title itself um, is chimney sweeper, the chim chimney sweeper. Chimney is a part uh, of furnace or is a part of uh, an industry or factory that is for the smoke to go out. So that is kind of pipe, a chimney. In Nepali, I think in Nepali also we use the same word, chimney. Dhuwa uh, Nepal. It's a pipe that is used for releasing the smokes or uh, smokes in a furnace or in a factory or in an industry. So in the beginning, let me recite the first four lines for you again. When my mother died, I was very young, and my father sold me while at my tongue, could scarcely cry, Whip, 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 whip. So your chimneys I sweep, and in suit I sleep. So in the first four lines, what do you think there? There is one speaker, a little speaker, a little boy, as they speak at the point. He is probably four or five years old, because we can guess the age. It's not given in the poem, but we can guess the age of the little boy, because he was very small when he started this job. Chimney sweeper, or sweeping the chimney, or cleaning the chimney of the big industries, big factories, was a very a, a kind of regular profession for those uh, orphans or those uh, small children, young boys especially, who were sold, or sometimes uh, sold intentionally by the parents, or maybe because of um, different circumstances, big, different conditions, you know. They had to work under such strict conditions in the factories. So here in the beginning, the little boy is just recounting, is just uh, narrating what happened in the past. He says he was sold in, uh, in a factory, or he was sold when he was a small boy after he lost his mother. His mother died, and his father, as a symbol of authority of the time, 
uh, you know, he sold him, he sold that little boy, he sold his own son um, to work as a chimney sweeper. And there, do you think he was happy? No, he was not happy. And that time he just cried because that was the age for crying and we know that little boy cried by just, uh, you know, reading the line there, and my father sold me while at my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. Let me draw your attention to this word here, weep, weep, four times. It has been given there. And this symbol, this punctuation here shows that, you know, some spelling or some, something is missing there in the word. That is not actually weep. This is sweep. But why in the line of the poem you can see this weep, 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 weep? It has got, you know, it has got double relations in the poem. Weep simply denotes the condition of the boy, the, the plight of the boy that he's crying. Or that was the time he wanted to cry. Why? Because he was very small, he was very young, and his mother was not there, his mother had died, and his father sold him. So he, he wept, he cried, and that's why it is weep. But in fact, as he was sold as a chimney sweeper, or to work as a chimney sweeper, even, you know, he could not pronounce this word well. Why? Because he was very small, he was very young. And he could not utter, he could not pronounce the word properly. For sweep, he said weep. Look at the condition, look at the plight. So he simply shared, um, or he could pronounce the word like whip, for sweep. And that was the time, you know, at that time, at that little age or early age, he was sold. You can imagine what kind of condition the boy had. So your chimneys, your chimneys, not my chimney, not my father's chimney. He simply says, your chimney. He was destined to work there. He was first to work there, and he doesn't have the feeling of ownness. He's not working for himself. Look at this. He worked for someone there. That was, uh, that's why he says, your chimneys, I sweep, and in soot I sleep. In soot, soot means here um, dust. That is, uh, you know, smoke. Dust of smoke, you can say. So this is dust. And while cleaning the, um, or while uh, sweeping the chimneys, you know, they had to sweep the chimney with brush, and then the, the dust, the, the soot should be, um, or should have been collected in the bags. So they had, they carried their bags, they carried their brushes, and just um, by using the brush, they just used to uh, clean the uh, soot, or clean the smokes, um, and then collect that in the bag. And that bag, in that bag he slept, means they, um, especially not only the little boy, that time all, there, there were so many young boys working like that, like him, and uh, what they did is they did not have proper bedding, they did not have proper bed for sleeping, and that's why they used to sleep where? They used to sleep by making the bed of the bags, the bags filled with what? Filled with soot, filled with dust or smokes. So that is uh, the first stanza all about. You can, from the first stanza, you can, uh, I think, get, um, is the poem happy or sad? The poem, the tone of the poem is very sad from the very beginning. And let's continue with the second stanza here. There's little Tom Dacker who cried when his head that curl like a lamb's back was saved, so I said, Hush, Tom, never mind it, for when your hair's bare, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. So in the second stanza of the poem, what do you think uh, is there? Now, that little boy, I think I just told you, uh, he might be around the age of four or five years, you know. And this boy is narrating, is telling, not about himself only. He is telling about his friends who work together with him. And here uh, he describes or he introduces in the second stanza, he introduces a little boy, another boy, who came there to work as chimney sweeper like him, like the speaker. 
how was he he was you know little boy and his name was tom decker tom decker was the name of that little boy that newcomer who cried when his head was saved why his head was saved his head was saved because it was the beginning of uh, the work at chimney sweeper and to work at chimney sweeper you know uh, your hair could be spoiled by uh, the dust by the smokes in the chimneys or that blackness you know that black dust of the black powder of uh, soot or say uh, smokes and that's why uh, for for the safety you can say or for not um, making him look like very um, dusty or say dirty his hair was set that curled hair that um, the boy tom decker had beautiful hair like that of lambs and the hair was curly that like that of lambs beautiful curly and young but also was said and the little boy cried you know why he cried he cried for uh, the loss of his hair he did not want to be saved in fact but his hair was saved maybe by the master master means by the uh, industry owner or factory owner or uh, the you know mature people there adult people or say observer or some could, someone maybe we can say boss his boss um, was there you know to save his hair so i said hush tom means the speaker though he was also little a small boy he had a kind of experience he was a kind of experienced boy because he was earlier there in the factory he was earlier there to work as chimney sweeper he had because of the experience he had you know he could console that newcomer that tom decker when he cried what he said the little boy the speaker of the poem said no just never mind it don't cry why don't cry because when your head is bare when your head is empty when there is no hair in your head or on your head what ha what happens here you know that the suit cannot spoil the hair it means now be safe your head is safe because you you have no more hair this means there will be no more dust there will be no more smoke on your head or um, that cannot the soot cannot spoil your hair that's why he, it is just a way of consolation the little boy tried to console um, tom decker but in fact there is irony in the poem this is ironical ironical in the sense in fact the speaker also um, does not want to be saved they are all unhappy for the loss of their hair but it is uh, you know it is the fact that you know they have to console themselves or they already know that they are destined they are forced to work there they are forced to do whatever others want them to do and that's why uh, there is irony means says one thing but deep inside the meaning is the other we have means the the children are not happy whether to be saved or to work as chimney sweeper or um, to do the things like that they have no freedom there so this is just the way it is the second stanza i guess you can understand what the poem is trying to say now comes here the third stanza um dear students sorry i wanted to show the slide on the screen but not working properly sorry now the third stanza here and so he was quiet and that very night as tom was sleeping he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers dick joe nate and jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black he was quiet after the consolation when the speaker the little boy tried to console or console means simply asking or pleading you know someone not to do something so he said uh, in nepali equivalent word we can say santona dine phakaune sada to speaker le jo boli racha kavita ma usle phakaune koshish garcha anubhavi aapko ekdam matured manche jastari so what he says here is 
don't cry, boy. Because when you will have no hair on your head, no tension of dust or dirt, no tension of smokes. So the little boy tried to console himself after hearing this. So he was quiet, he was silent, he didn't speak a word. But that very night, what happened, you know? That very night, um, Tom Dacre, the boy who came later in, to work as chimney sweeper in the uh, factory or in the industry with the boy, with the speaker, what happened here? He had a dream. He envisioned a dream. He saw a dream. In the dream, do you know what happens here? While sleeping, Tom had a sight, had a dream that thousands of sweepers, some names are given there, common names. Common names in the sense, the names commonly used um, to refer to some boys in England. Just like common names, like we say Ram and Sita in Nepal. They have got Dick, Joe, Nate, Jack. These are just the names commonly used somewhere, uh, everywhere. So that, that thousands of sweepers, from this line, you can just um, get the meaning. It is not only the speaker. It is not only Tom Dacre. We had to work in the factories. We had to work as chimney sweepers. Or we had to get involved in or get engaged in such kind of uh, minor or say uh, t um, terrible type of works. You know? Can you imagine yourself in that place? Working for some people, working for some masters, factory owners, for, for a single penny or sometimes you know, for no mon money at all? You are not paid. Even if you are paid, you are paid less. And you have no freedom there. You cannot study, you cannot go to school, you cannot enjoy. Just sometimes, you know, you have dreams to be free, to, you have rights to play, you have rights to entertain, or say, uh, you have rights to eat whatever you want, because you are children. Such small children also are forced to work in the factories. This means this is a kind of serious matter. I think you, you got it. So what happens here? Tom is dreaming. Tom, while sleeping, he dreams or he has a dream. And in the dream, what happens? Young children, like other children were there, working as chimney sweepers. Thousands of chimney sweepers like Dick, Joe, Nick, uh, Ned, uh, Jack, they were all locked up. Locked up is, you know, like protected, not let free. They are closed inside, shut up inside. It means they were locked up, locked inside the house, locked inside uh, the door, or locked inside for, we can say, is it for security? Security or for, you know, sometimes for safety? So, were all of them locked up, not locked up inside the room, locked up in coffins of black. You know coffin? A coffin is a box where a dead body is kept, a dead body is buried or sometimes you know cremated burnt it's in according to you know christian mythology or say christian culture we can say not mythology in fact in christian culture the dead body is put in a box and that is cremated either that is buried under the ground put under the ground or is cre cremated means burnt generally in christian culture you know it is buried it is put under the ground but in hindu culture uh, we burn the dead body, not in a box. We have a kind of different um, way of doing that. So, the boys were locked up, but in black coffins. And this black coffins has got, you know, symbolic meaning. Symbolic in the sense, black, uh, you know, black coffins refer to the chimneys themselves, where you know, they had to climb up the chimneys. Those young children had to climb up the chimneys because chimneys are high, you know, in, uh, on top of the buildings or factory buildings, you can say. They had to climb up the chimneys. They had to clean. They had to brush um, the chimneys and then that soot or that dust had to be um, put inside the bag which they carry with them while climbing up the chimneys. See? And they were closed inside. They were um, locked up inside. But that was only a dream. What does it mean? That means they are not free. Even in the dream, Tom Dacre uh, did not see a kind of 
good or uh, say um, good condition of the children because they were locked inside. And in the third stanza, you can uh, sorry fourth stanza you can say and by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, laughing, they run and was in a river and shine in the sun. In this stanza, in the fourth stanza, what do you see here? Um, in the third stanza, we know or we knew the children were locked inside, they were not happy, or um, they were not free, but in the fourth stanza, in the fourth stanza, right? In the fourth stanza, an angel came. Angel is just the messenger of God, or say the messenger from God, messenger from the heaven. That is, uh, messenger is a person who is sent to, you know, um, to deliver a message. That is, messenger. So, an angel came from the heaven or descended down from the heaven. And what happened? He came there, or the angel came there with a bright key. Many people misunderstand the angel like uh, angel as uh, simply putty. Angel is not simply putty. Angel is the messenger of God. It can be a male or maybe female. But the messenger came there with a message of God. And this time, this angel came with a bright key. The key to open the black coffins in which the young children, the, those small children were locked inside. They came there. How, see how symbolic it is? Those, those children, in fact, they are not free. They want to enjoy freedom. They want to be free. They, they want to get out or they want to get out of such kind of works or working environment or they want to enjoy life. They, are, they have no life at all. So, as their desire, as their wish is to be free, what happens here? Even in the dream, the boy is dreaming like this. The boy dreams an angel coming with a key to open, to free the children, thousands of such children like him. By came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Means the angel came there, he opened the coffins, means opened that box with what? With the key, bright key, and set them all free, means release them, released, or set them free, or freed them. And uh, then down a green plain, after, after the release, what happened? What did the children do? The children started running, you know, running happily. For the first time, they enjoyed, or they are just going to enjoy their maximum freedom, their happiness. Or, in other words, we can say, they are going to enjoy their life. Life without freedom is not a life at all. You can imagine that. You know, when you have no freedom, when you have to work under pressure, when you have to work for someone else, even not for your parents, you know, you have to work for some other unknown people, some other boss or masters, you know. You can imagine what happens to your life. You are no more living there. And simply uh, by looking at these lines also, what you can imagine is locked up inside the box, black box, refers to death. That can be another meaning. Why death? Because till death, they are no more free. They have no chance to escape. They, are, they have no chance to free themselves. And because they have no one. No one means no parents. See? So, inside, locked up inside the black box refers to death. And from the box of death, who came here? Messenger comes there to free them. And after freeing, that is the dream. We are talking about the dream right now. The dream the little boy Tom Dacre had. He opened the coffins, means the, the angel opened the coffins, 
and set them free. After be, being free, what they did, they started running, they started jumping, or say they started laughing, enjoying happiness, enjoying freedom. They ran everywhere. And then they ran down a green plain in a green field. Green plain refers to green field, a beautiful scene, a beautiful field where uh, the children started running and jumping. They started laughing and then they just took wash, you know, means that they took a bath. This, uh, they started swimming in the river, they started cleaning their bodies. Why cleaning the bodies? Because in the factories, in the industries, while clean, cleaning the chimneys, while sweeping the chimneys, they had no chance to um, make themselves you know, clean. They were dirty children. They were dusty children. Or say, uh, they had no chance to take a bath. Even if they took bath, you know, they're, because of their work, they could be dirty again. So, after becoming free, after they were set free from the boxes, from the black coffins, they started jumping, running, enjoying freedom. They washed themselves in the river, in the clean water of the river, and then they sunbathed, means they sat in the sun. This, their bodies were shining in the sun. See, this, uh, this is a kind of beautiful moment Tom Dacre had in his dream. And in the next stanza, that is stanza number five, then naked and white, all their bags left behind, they rise up on clouds and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he would be a good boy, he would have God for his father and never want joy. A very serious kind of uh, matter is there in this stanza too. You know, in the fourth stanza, the children washed themselves in the clean water of the river and they sat in the sun. They enjoyed, they laughed, they, uh, they jumped, they ran. And what happened in the fifth stanza? After doing all that things, you know, after washing themselves up, what they did? They started returning from there naked. They didn't wear clothes. Here, you know, clothes for small children are a kind of barrier, a kind of, you know, um, separation. It's a, there is no freedom. This is lack of freedom. You have to work under the pressure. That's what clothes do. Clothes is the boundary. You are bounded inside, you know. You have no freedom. Young children, they want to swim naked. They want to run naked. They want to play naked. Naked means uncovered. They don't want to cover their bodies because they are children and because they are innocent. And remember one thing, uh, this poem, William Blake uh, uh, composed this poem and published in uh, his, uh, his poetry collection in 1789, the year when the French Revolution began. And that was the time uh, when the Industrial Revolution was going on in England. And Industrial Revolution in the sense why I wanted to refer to that time of history, that period of history, is because this poem deals with the child workers. That time when there were big industries established in the UK. And because of those factories and industries, young children like Tom Dacre and the speaker, how they had to work under such um, dismal or say pitiable kind of plight. That's why this poem was composed. The poet was touched by this, this seriousness, this, uh, this type of condition of the young children in England, and that's why this poem was composed the year when the French Revolution began, in 1789. And it was published in the Songs of Innocence. And here you can see some references of innocence of children in different occasions here. Like um, uh, we, we saw lamb's back, comparing the um, little boy's hair with lamb's back. Lamb is also a symbol of Jesus, Jesus Christ, you know. Lamb is a symbol of innocence. Even children themselves are a symbol of innocence. And there, uh, the same poem, uh, same poem means uh, the poem, the chimney sweeper, 
The second part of the poem was published in the Song of uh, Experience in, um, I think, 1794. It means this poem, the chimney sweeper, has got two versions. This is the first version, and in the uh, it, it as it is the first version, it deals with the innocence of the children, and the second version of the poem, the second part of the poem, deals with the experience. You can see. As um, Tom Dacre came in the beginning, you know, when he came, he was very innocent. He cried for that. He cried for the loss of his hair. Innocence. But that little boy who already know what they should do um, there or what their life is going to be like, he slowly got experience of his life and they, he knew um, what uh, he should do or what uh, his life is going to be like. Then he got some experience, so he became experienced. So this is the contrast, this is the conflict of innocence and experience in the poem. But you, you children may not understand each and everything what this poem is trying to say, but simply try to understand. You don't need to know deeply, but just simply try to understand they are working under such um, pressure, under such condition. They are chimney shapers. Chimney shaping is not a good job. You understand it? Understand it? And um, only their dream is to be free from such kind of um, barriers, such kind of conditions. And uh, that's why Tom Dacre is uh, having a dream or seeing a dream here. And in that dream, how young children, they just jumped, ran, enjoyed the freedom because they wanted what, uh, they, they just got it what they wanted to do. So naked and uh, white means their bodies were uncovered, naked, and that's why they looked white their white skin, they left their bags behind, means by leaving their bags. And bags means here, in the bags, there might be um, their clothes, because they were naked. They, they left the bags of clothes behind. And they rise up on clouds, means slowly they rose up. They rise up. They rise up like the messenger of God. They rise up on the clouds like the messenger came down from the heaven. They are now with the messenger. They are going up. See? And a spot in the wind. A spot in the wind means they play in the wind. And the angel told Tom, the messenger told Tom, if he would be a good boy, he would have, a, he would have God for his father. It means this boy does not have father. Orphan, he is orphan. So, in place of father, there would be God for him. If he were good, if they were good, you know, they don't, uh, they didn't have to worry about father or parents. There is God for them to take care of them. And never want joy means there will be so much happiness. There will be maximum happiness they want. They desire, they wish for, and that's why they will not desire. They will, uh, they will not need any more joy, any more happiness, any more pleasures, because God will, will be with them. And because God will act as their fathers. See? And so Tom awoke, this is the final stanza, and so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm, so if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. In the final stanza, uh, you know, while dreaming, Tom got up, Tom awoke. At the same time, the speaker also awoke. They got up, uh, and then uh, after getting up from the bed, what they did? They started their work again. They started to continue to work uh, with their bags and with their brushes. They got ready for work with their bags and brushes. The morning was very cold, though. The morning was cold. But Tom, Tom Dacre, that little boy, was not unhappy. He was happy. He was warm because he had that dream. Because he, even in the dream, no, though it was dream, just in the dream, he became happy. He was free. Or later in the dream, the messenger was there. So the messenger told him, told him what? The messenger might have told him, if all do their duty, they, they need not fear harm means if you are dutiful, if you work hard, 
if you do what you are destined to do, what you are given to do, then there will be no danger, nobody harms you, uh, or nobody beats you, or nobody does any harm to you. You are safe. You are done. So this is the end of the poem. But um, let me tell you one thing. There are so many rhyming words. The poem is really beautiful. Uh, if there are so many things, you know, if you, you don't uh, get or if you have not really understood the poem, you can get the help of your teachers as well. Uh, but I think uh, it's not that much difficult, though there are some hidden meanings in the poem. Uh, don't care about such deep meanings in the poem, but simply get the ideas, uh, the surficial ideas of the poem. So this is the end of the poem. And next time, in our next class, we'll do the exercises based on this poem. So some, some of you can do the exercise yourself as well. Um, but don't worry about the exercise, if, even if they are difficult. Next time we'll be together. I'll be helping you. So thank you very much for being with me. And now this is the time for signing out. Uh, OK, take care. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.